Hey guys, Aubrey here with Ethereum Motorsports. Um, so today I'm doing a uh, video of my electric YZ build. This is a 2001 YZ250F, uh, the steel frame model, and uh, I built it with parts from Electro and Company. So um, this is just going to be a video of me building it. I'll do another video reviewing it later once I have some more time on it. I'll probably get some videos of other people riding it, let some other, uh, some better riders ride it. I'm not, I'm not a great mi rider by any means. Uh, I like to do a little single track and, and play around, but um, you know, uh, I know people that are better than me, so I'll have them ride it and see what they think of it. I think uh, it's really fun to ride. I've really been enjoying it, but I could see when you get into like technical so slow speed stuff where you're trying to, um, you know, get up over a, a log or a stump or rocks, you know, um, without having the ability to drop that clutch and to, uh, you know, to rev it out and drop the clutch or to use the clutch to kick it out um, when you're revving it. Uh, I, I could see it just not, you won't have the element of control, obviously. Um, but for high speed stuff, it's really fun or medium speed, speed stuff, it's really fun. So um, let me turn this around and I'll show you, obviously it's already done. So I'll show you the bike and uh, done, and then I'll show you um, the process of building it. All right, so here's the finished bike. Um, I put, uh, got new tires and rims for it. I like these uh, cheater tires. So this is the cheater fat tire on the front, and um, this is the, uh, the uh, 525 cheater on the rear with an 18 inch rim, and I put, uh, I had, uh, I had um, bib mooses put in them, so. I uh, don't have to worry about flat tires or any of that. Um, that's just what I like to ride. And again, I'm not very good. So, uh, you know, they seems to, it gives me a, a lot of control, um, allows me to climb up out of the ruts and kind of put bike where I want it to go. Um, this is the Electro & Co two stroke battery. It's 48 amp hours. You can see how nicely it fits in here. There's not much extra space at all. And then I built all the aluminum brackets here. Um, and this motor and controller combination is about uh, 28 kilowatts, I think, max. So uh, I think that's somewhere between 35 and 40 horsepower. Uh, I, I'd have to calculate it out. Um, but it's got, it's got a decent amount of horsepower. If you go with the new Zapper controller, um, it has, uh, I think, 50 kilowatts max power. Um, and that is like closer to like 67 horsepower, I think. But um, that came out like a couple weeks after I got mine. So, you know, I might upgrade to that at some point. The nice thing about the Zapper unit is that it also does regenerative braking, um, which this one does not. So that would be really nice to have regen braking. I think that, uh, you know, it would make your battery go a lot further. So you could get further on, a, on the same size battery. But if you're putting out more power, you know, it might not, um, might not help that much if you're using up more power too. So this is the dashboard that comes with it. And then I've got a three, three power switch, I guess you would call it. And when I flip this, it actually switches. So that's one, two, and then three, it goes to four for some reason, but it at least tells you, um, which power you're at without having to like look down at the switch. Um, I got some new plastics for it. Went with like a darker color. Uh, I wasn't really a big fan of the blue and white, but you know, personal preference. So this is a gear driven um, <clears throat> or a, uh, a geared down motor. So your electric motors has a gear on the end of it, it comes over here, there's a gearbox here. I have to message Electro and company and see um, what, I gotta take care of that too. That's supposed to be down so it can breathe. Um, <clears throat> what kind of uh, gear oil they're putting in there and, and how often I should change it because um, that's going to be important. But uh, that's the bike. The other thing that I'm going to do <coughs> soon here is I've got a um, DC to DC step down converter and I'm going to put a Baja Designs LED in here. I like the amber combo driving light for, for riding in the woods even during the day. Um, just gives you that extra bit of vis visibility. And the controller is up in the air box here. Now this is another thing. Um, when I looked at the Electro and Company model, they had the uh, controller exposed here. I was originally thinking about enclosing it into the air box so that it would be more protected from, from the elements. But I realized that, you know, um, that this thing's got a giant heat sink on, on it and it has to cool. 
So I don't know, I'm sure it's got some kind of thermal overload switch in it that will cut it out if it gets too hot. But um, this design, it's on aluminum plate back in here. Um, and that is gonna let a lot of airflow. You've got your scoops here, and that's gonna direct all your airflow right in there. And then you've got this right here where the air can come out the back. Um, so when you're riding fast, it's gonna be getting air through there and cooling that thing down. So I don't think I'll have any issues with that overheating. But anyways, that's, that's the bike right there. And um, I'll show you the build here, and then eventually I'll get another video with the uh, uh, review. Uh, I forgot to mention this, but I am not being sponsored by Electro & Co. I paid for all these parts outright, so I'm not affiliated with them, I'm not being paid by them. Um, so I, I'm not reviewing this product right now anyways, but uh, I do want everybody to know that um, I paid for the parts, and so any opinions that I express about this kit or its functionality is, uh, is my honest opinion. All right. So this thing is not gonna be the easiest to mount. If we look at it here, you can see that these mounts here are the same on this side. This one, for some reason, sticks out an extra less than a 16th of an inch there. These ones are also the same, but then this one sticks out way further. So, it's not like I can just make, simply make brackets that go around there really nice and easy. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an insert here, and that's going to be my main connecting point, and I'm going to take some strap aluminum and bring it down and have it connect here, and then probably have it connect here, and then have it wrap back around the motor to there, and then my motor connection points will clamp onto the motor at each individual spot, and it'll give me a spot to mount my battery up here. And then I might bring a piece up and attach it to here. So starting point's gonna be right here though. And if we look at this, these are steel collars there. And I believe on the motor that I pulled off of here, it's got, it's an aluminum block and casing obviously, but it's got um, a steel insert in it, if I remember correctly, which I don't have the motor here anymore. I sold it, but, um, pretty sure it had a steel insert. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of stainless steel here and cut it out to fit that. And then I'm going to take a piece of aluminum and drill it out and have it fit over that so that I can make this whole framework out of aluminum. Um, the other thing I might consider doing is putting a steel bar across here and having the aluminum bracket connect to that too to give it a little bit extra rigidity. Um, we're gonna see how it comes together and how confident I'm feeling with the mounts with just having it mounted here, here, and here. Um, so, but yeah, the, the, uh, when I machine this, I'm going to machine it with an interference fit and then I'm going to freeze this and I'm going to heat this and I'm gonna slip them together so that they fit nice and tight. Um, so it could be a giant pain, but uh, we're going to give it a shot and see how it goes. so that it'll stick better. And then what I'm gonna do is ream this out. So this is 873 thousandths. I'm gonna ream this out to like 870 thousandths. So there's like a three thousandths interference fit. Um, and then I'm gonna heat this up and I'm gonna put this in the freezer and try and uh, sleeve this. Um, and if it doesn't work, then I might have to ream that a little bit more, but I think like a three thousandths interference will be doable. Uh, but we won't know until we try it, so. Go stick this in the freezer.
So if you've never seen one of these before, really slick little tool for getting accurate measurements inside of something. So um, spring loaded, and then when you push these in, they lock, and you can unlock them. So you push them in, lock them, stick them in here, and measure the inside of this. Lock it down, pull it out. Okay, so that's 871, uh, 871,000. So that's about a 2,000th interference fit. So some places it measures slightly less than that um, because it's not totally smooth in there. Uh, but I think it'll fit pretty nice. No way to know until we try it. All right, well, it looks like I had a little bit too much interference. And it cracked. So, going to have to make up another one. Yeah. See you later. And uh, hope that the next one doesn't crack. Guess Otherwise, we'll have to make it a little closer to the right size. Yeah. But, you know, live and learn. This is the first time I've done this. Well, he hasn't actually, first time he's done it, he has done it in other dads. No, it's the first time I've done that. The first time I've tried sleeving a piece of aluminum like that. Didn't you got? Didn't your other friends and you guys did make one? Um. Nope. I think you did. <laughs> All right, I didn't have time to take the camera over there, but uh, second attempt was also a failure. I guess I didn't heat it up quite enough. Um, this was only about a 1,000th interference, so the fit should have been fine, but um, I didn't heat it up quite far enough, I think, and then I couldn't get it pounded in there fast enough. By the time I got to the... Um, but to the press, it had already cooled too much. So this was a larger diameter aluminum too. So it should be, um, it should give me more meat, less likely to crack. But I'll have to do this again.
so here's a quick update on where I'm at right now. <clears throat> I've got this piece welded up under here and bent up. That's a piece of three by three eighths inch flat aluminum. And it ties into this aluminum, sleeved aluminum block there. Um, and then <clears throat> this is gonna go over top of the motor. Um, but I'm going to make a piece of uh, quarter inch aluminum here that this bolts to so that I can separate these pieces to get the motor in and out. So this will be <clears throat> one piece on top here, and then I'll have the bottom section, and then I'm gonna tie them together here with a, a removable bolted section too. So um, I think it should be pretty rugged. The battery will be able to sit on top of here. This piece broke off when I was trying to bend it, but <clears throat> that's all right. I'm just gonna get it held in place here and weld it instead, rather than redoing it. It'd probably be stronger anyways. All right, so I just got around to editing all the footage and realized there's, there's a lot more there than I thought. So I'm gonna do two bit videos on the build and then I'll do a third video um, to review it. And then if I ever get around to putting the updated, the controller, the newer controller in there, then I'll do a fourth video, um, but we'll see. This one has tons of power as it is. So the only real reason that I would want to go with the newer controller would be for the, uh, the regenerative braking. So, um, if you have any questions, put them in the comments. If you have anything that you wanna see in the review video, uh, put those in the comments. I'm pretty good about getting back to people. And um, uh, like and subscribe for more Erie Motorsports uh, uh, content. I'm going to be um, getting the race car running here, getting it put back together. And uh, my first race is in about a month here. So um, thanks for watching and um, stay tuned for the part two.